Hey there, and welcome back to the channel. Do you know the board game Mastermind? It's a game where your opponent chooses a secret code of four different colors, and your task as a player is to guess that secret code. You have to figure out what these four colors actually are. Now, every time you make a guess and you propose a sequence of colors, your opponent has to tell you whether or not you got any of the colors right, and whether any of the colors that you did get right are actually in their correct positions, that is, position A, B, C, or D. It's a fun game. It requires you to apply logical reasoning, come up with hypotheses, testing those hypotheses. So I quite like it. Yeah. And in this video, we're going to code that game from scratch in R. <clears throat> the full code you can download in the description below, but actually we'll build it up bit by bit and we'll try to get it to work. Right, so this video is intended for complete beginners in R. If you're just starting out, if you've just downloaded R and R Studio and you've maybe gotten to know vectors and data frames and loops and functions, uh, this is for you. You will be able to figure this out. Now, as a first step, let me just demo this game and uh, let me show you what we're working with. So, in the console, you see that I called a function, namely the function mastermind. So, mastermind, open and close brackets, that starts an interactive function. And you see that the first thing that happens is that we get a bit of text. We get a prompt that says there are eight colors, black, red, blue, orange, pink, green, purple, and yellow. Choose four colors for positions A, B, C, and D. Okay, that's fine. And then the last prompt here in blue says, what color for position A? So I'm going to go with black. I'm going to type that into the console and hit return. For the second color, I'm going to say red. <clears throat> for the third color, I'm going to go with blue. And for the fourth color, I'm going to say orange. Okay, you see that some information has popped up in the plot area of our studio. There are now the four colors that are selected, black, red, blue, and orange. And uh, next to the colors, there are two further pieces of information. So next to pause, there's a zero, which tells me that none of the colors that are selected are actually in the correct position. <clears throat> but uh, two of the colors that are selected are actually part of the secret code. So that is information that I can use in the next guesses that I'm making. Okay, I'm going to play the game now. I'm going to speed up the video so that it's not so boring for you. All right, here we go. Okay, that was definitely not one of my better games. I almost lost there, but you can see how I gradually made my way to four correct positions. And in the end, then the secret code is revealed and we get a nice message that we won and a melody to go with it. Okay, let's now figure out how all of this is coded, what is going on behind the scenes. So let's start. Okay, the very first thing we're going to do is to create a function that lets the user input four different colors. And there's one important element for that, namely the function read line. I'm going to type that in here. Read line, open close brackets. And inside the brackets, there is a space for an argument of read line, namely the prompt that you're going to see on the screen as the player. So I'm going to type into uh, double quotes uh, what color for uh, position A? Question mark and a white space. We'll see why that white space needs to be there. So read line prompts the user, the player, for input 
and we want to store that input into a data structure. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to simply start at the very start of the line here and write uh, color A and then use the assignment operator that is smaller than and uh, minus. So you should have color A, smaller minus, read line, what color for position A. Okay, and we can actually try that out already. Um, <clears throat> so if I run this line here, uh, you see that in the console, uh, the prompt shows up what color for position A, and I can type in anything here. Like for instance, let's say that my favorite color is uh, red. I um, <clears throat> can put that in, hit enter, and after that color uh, A, is saved in our studio as red. Okay, so uh, easy way of getting information into R's memory. Obviously, we're going to need this not only for color A, but also for the other three colors. So I'm going to uh, just simply copy and paste this uh, three times and adjust this to color B, C, oops. <clears throat> and uh, D, and uh, in the prompt we're going to change the letters to A, B, C, and D. Right, um, once that's accomplished, uh, we want to create a data structure that holds all of these four colors. So for that, uh, we're going to create another Uh, vector, namely uh, one that we're going to name four color set again. We're going to use the assignment operator smaller minus and uh, we're going to use the function C to concatenate color A, color B, color C and color D. Okay, uh, so I'm going to do that here, color A, color B, color C, color D. Okay, so um, <clears throat> we can test that out right here. So if I run color A and say red, and then I run the next line, uh, and I say for color B, um, green, then I run color C, and I say uh, blue, and for color D, yeah, let's, <clears throat> let's choose black here. Okay, if I now run this line here, four color set, and then the four colors, uh, let me do that. That should give us a data structure in R's memory that holds the four colors that I specified as the player. Let me try that. Okay. Four color set holds red, green, blue, and black, the colors that I specified just a second ago. Okay, that's great, um, but there are still a few things that we need to do at this point. Namely, we need to specify the prompts that come before, that tell the player, look, uh, there are eight colors, uh, these are the color names, and you should choose one for position A, C, B, C, and D. Um, <clears throat> Okay, so there we just have the prompt, but no input from the player. So there's a different function than readLine that we need to use, and that function is cat. There are others uh, that you could also be using, but cat is simply a function that lets you print out stuff into the console. And uh, the first thing would be uh, just a statement. There are <clears throat> eight colors colon and a white space and then in a second line <clears throat> I tell the player what these colors are black, red, blue, orange, pink, green, purple and yellow okay and then uh, in a third line, choose 
four colors for positions A, B, C, and D. Okay. What we need to do now is to bundle up all these lines of code in a single function. Maybe you do know about how R lets you create functions. If not, then, well, this is your introduction to how it's done. Uh, first of all, you choose a name for the function that you're writing. Um, our name in this case is going to be color choice. Okay. Uh, then the assignment operator, so smaller minus. And then uh, we use the function that is called function, okay? That just lets you create functions. And uh, the way it works is that function is followed by uh, open and close brackets, and after that there are wavy brackets. <clears throat> if you're not sure how to insert wavy brackets on your keyboard, if you don't see them on a keyboard, maybe because you're using a Mac, uh, Alt and 8 will do the trick. Okay, let me see if I said that right. Yeah, okay. Um, okay, so we have these wavy brackets and all the stuff that we've written should go into those wavy brackets. So uh, I'm deleting the closed ones and putting it down here. Alt 9, Mac users, yeah. So now we have um, <clears throat> all of our code inside the wavy brackets that uh, specify the function color choice. And actually I'm thinking that uh, we might be ready with this part of the game. So at this point, um, you know what, let me save uh, what we're doing here. <clears throat> Okay, so uh, let me run this function. And you see, if I hit run on this line, it actually runs the entire chunk of code uh, until we have the closed brackets. And now I can run this function color choice, <clears throat> open close brackets. And what happens is this, uh, we get a prompt. There are eight colors, black, red, blue, orange, pink, green, purple, and yellow. Choose four colors for position A, B, C, and D. What color for position A? Let's choose purple. What color for position B? I feel like blue is a good option. Then orange. And one thing, you see these things popping up here in our studio, okay? There are data structures that have the same name and our studio is trying to be helpful here when actually it's not. Yeah. So the way to make these disappear is use your uh, arrow keys, go back and forth and they're gone and then you can hit, hit enter and everything's okay. Yeah. Uh, there will be times when you don't pay attention and you hit enter and everything goes to shit. Well, that's just how it is. You do it over and then things are fine. Uh, okay, and then black as the last one. Boom. Um, so the cursor is back there. Looks like nothing happened, but um, <clears throat> the four color set should be specified. However, there's one thing that we need to correct. I'm seeing that now. And that would be that uh, the four color set here we specified with this assignment operator, smaller minus. That means that inside the function, four color set will be there, but as soon as we're outside the function, R doesn't really remember it. Let me just test that really quick. Four color set. Okay, you see it's still the old one, yeah? However, if we change this to uh, four color set, smaller, smaller minus, and then C. Um, that should actually do the trick. So I'm running it again. I'm re-executing color choice. And this time I'm going for red, 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 green. Uh, and now four color set. Boom, it's there. Yeah. Okay, so congratulations. We managed to write our first function for the mastermind game. Let's just save so we have that. Um, it's always a good idea to annotate your code a little bit. So with the hashtag uh, or pound sign or 
whatever you like to call it, William, I don't know. Um, we can add descriptions that are not read as proper code. So <clears throat> we can write something like let the player choose four colors. Okay, excellent. This part is done. Let's move on to the next one. The next thing that we're going to do is to create the graphical side of the game, yeah, the plot, if you like. And um, <clears throat> uh, the basic function for that is actually called plot. Yeah? So we're creating a two-dimensional coordinate system, <clears throat> except when we start, we actually don't plot anything into it. That is why uh, we uh, write plot and then null, yeah? So this creates an empty plot. You can test that out uh, for yourself if you like. Um, I want to specify the x and y coordinates of the coordinate system that we're plotting. So for that, I'm using arguments that plot can take, namely x lim and y lim. So those are the limits of the x coordinates and the y coordinates. For uh, x lim, I want uh, them to be between 0 and 7. <clears throat> so you write x lim equals c and then in brackets 0, uh, comma 7. And for y lim, uh, I want to have uh, c and then in brackets 0, 12. <clears throat> um, okay, we can actually try that out. If I, if I run this, see, this is what it looks like. <clears throat> Almost like the graph that you saw earlier, but we still need to change a few things around here. So after uh, the Wylam argument, uh, we specify an argument that is called xlab, <clears throat> that is uh, the labeling of the x-axis, and we choose no labeling whatsoever, so just uh, two double quotation marks, and the same for the uh, y-axis, so ylab equals double quotation marks, and we even say axis equals f, okay? Now, if you uh, run all of this, you may get uh, a nasty surprise. <gasps> nothing happens. Yeah? Nothing is there. Well, it's actually there, except you don't see it right now. Okay? Uh, you can make it visible with the following line of code that just says box and then open close brackets, which draws a box around the plot <clears throat> that you have created. Okay, so it's there. Uh, first you don't see it, now you do see it. Okay, so this is our, well, graphical interface for the game. And now we're plotting things into that graphical interface. Um, the first thing that we want to do is to plot a little bit of text down here that specifies where we have position A, position B, and so on and so forth. And there's a function that lets you do that, that is called text, okay? Text takes um, X coordinates, Y coordinates, and labels for the things that you want to have printed out at those X and Y coordinates. So <clears throat> I want things happening at uh, point one, two, three, four, five, and six. So my X coordinates are C, and then in brackets, one, colon 6. Okay, This creates a vector of 6 numbers, 1, 2, 3, 5, 4, 5, 6. Um, can't even count anymore. Okay, um, I want all of them to be down here. So for the y coordinates, that means I need 6 uh, zeros. So I'm writing rep, that means repeat, 0, uh, 6 times. <clears throat> Those are my y coordinates. And now for the labels, okay? Labels, uh, that's an argument that the text function can take. And uh, again, we use the C concatenate function. And in double quotes, we put A, B, C, D, 
and then uh, pause and call. Okay. Right. Um, we can try this out and run it. Yeah, doesn't look bad. Uh, in the game that you saw earlier, I had the text a little smaller. So you can adjust the text size in a graph like this with the sex argument. And I had it at 0 0.8. So if I'm running these three lines again, one, two, three, you see the, the text is just a little bit smaller. Yeah, It's up to you how you like it. Um, this was the sweet spot for me, but yours may be elsewhere. We don't just want these text items here. We also want the gray dots for uh, the secret code up on the plot. Okay, And that we do with a function that is called points. <clears throat> points doesn't only plot round things, yeah, points, but uh, all kinds of things, yeah, any kind of data point you can plot into a two-dimensional surface. So that's what we're doing here. Um, <clears throat> we have four circles that we want to plot. So we need x-coordinates and y-coordinates. The x-coordinates in this case are 1, 2, 3, 4. So um, C and then in brackets 1 colon 4, that gives you 1, 2, 3, 4. And uh, for the <clears throat> y-coordinates, up here you can't see it, but it's actually 12. Okay, so this goes from 1, 2, 3, up to 12 up here. That's what we specified in the ylim argument. So for the y argument, I'm saying rep, so repeat, uh, 12 four times. Okay. Now, um, <clears throat> to give a shape to plot uh, to R, there is an argument that says uh, PCH, um, and that holds different kinds of shapes that you can plot into a surface. Um, there's a whole range of them, and the one that I need for this, there's no way of knowing this beforehand, but uh, the one that I want to use here is 19. Okay, so you can try them all out from 1 up to 19 and, I don't know, 25 or so. Uh, you can try out uh, different shapes, but 19 gives you a circle with a solid color, and that's what I wanted. Yeah. Okay, um, <clears throat> we have to make these circles relatively large. So um, I'm sizing the text to 3 times the ordinary size here, and for the color of the circles, I want these to be a shade of gray, relatively light gray, so gray 70 gives you a nice light gray. And uh, yeah, I think that's actually it. Let me run this. Boom, we have the circles. And um, that's almost what you saw earlier, except there <clears throat> I decided to make them just a little bit nicer. Yeah. So if you copy and paste this line with the points and replace PCH19 with PCH1 and then set the size to 3.4 or something of that sort, uh, you can actually lose the, the color argument. If you run this, see, black circles around the gray dots, I think this makes for a slightly nicer appearance. Yeah. Call me OCD, um, but hey, you know, you do what works for you. Whatever gets your juices flowing, that's you know, that's what you should do. Okay, um, I think this is what we need to create the the basic plot, yeah, where all the rest of the game is happening. So again, we're going to have to bundle up these lines of code in a function that we can just call. Uh, so that the computer does everything at once. So again, we're using the function function, and we have to give a name to all of this. So I'm going to choose the name game plot smaller minus function and then open close brackets, wavy brackets up, and after the second line of points, wavy brackets down. Oh, what you see here, ah, 
now it's gone. You saw for a moment that uh, there are these red crosses that um, pop up that warn you that something might go wrong, okay? Let me delete the closing wavy brackets and they will reappear, hopefully. Yeah, there they are, okay? So here, uh, there's an unexpected end of the document and we can fix that by adding the wavy brackets and then R takes a little while to think and then it goes, oh yeah, okay, that's fine. So again, some annotation. <clears throat> uh, let's just write background plot for the game. And that actually completes our second basic ingredient for the game. Okay, the plot is not the only thing that we need to put in place before the player can actually interact with the computer. There are a few more things, pieces of information that we need to provide, uh, that we need to put in order before the game can actually start. So one thing that we haven't specified actually is a set of colors that the player can choose from. So we're going to do that. Um, we're going to uh, create a data structure that we name color set, okay? And then smaller, smaller, minus, so that this data structure is available in all functions that we are going to use. Um, and with the C function, we just specify eight colors. And I have chosen black, red, uh, blue, orange, Pink. The linguists among you, you notice I'm not going Berlin and K here, yeah, so didn't think of it um, anyway. Green, purple, and yellow. Okay, so do we have eight? Yes, we do have eight, so that's fine. Um, and we still need the secret code, okay, so the secret code that the computer is going to choose. <clears throat> um, so the computer needs to take four of these at random, okay? And R has a function for that that is called sample. Yeah. Sample uh, takes arguments, it takes the uh, range of things that you can pick items from. So we're going to write color set and four because we want the computer to sample four of these. Actually, let's try this out. So I'm going to run color set and I'm going to run secret code. And now secret code this time is orange, purple, pink, and black. Let me just repeat secret code. Okay, now it's red, blue, green, and purple. <clears throat> Once more, just for the fun of it green, blue, purple, orange. You see it picks something different every time. Um, yeah, uh, that is what's happening in this line. Yeah, the computer is picking the secret code that's going to be hidden, so to speak, behind the gray circles. Okay, oh then, um, I have a new favorite library in R and that would be the library uh, that's called Beeper. Um, Yeah, you spell it beep and then R. If uh, you don't have that library installed, and I suspect you don't, okay, uh, there's something that you need to do uh, in order to get this. Namely, uh, you need in RStudio, uh, you need to install Beeper. Okay, the way to install uh, a package in R is that you go to this packages writer and you select the package that you want to install uh, so that the check mark is activated here and you just uh, hit the install button and then the cogs will turn and hopefully your package will be installed. Um, just to show you what Beeper can do because it's remarkable. Yeah? So there's a function in it that has the um, telling name beep yeah? and uh, it just takes an argument of a number in its brackets, and if I run beep one, <laughs> uh, beep two, that's a nice one, beep three. Okay, 
So lots of things to choose from, you know. Uh, if you have a few hours to kill, beeper, you know, that's what I would do. Okay, uh, so we have loaded the library with uh, game sounds and we actually need a counter. Yeah, uh, as a player, you only have uh, 12 guesses and after that you lose. Yeah, so we set the counter to one right here and from there we uh, update it so that it increases and increases and eventually gets to 12 if you don't win before that. Okay, um, so these are our game preparations. Uh, so we can close the, uh, well, <clears throat> function up here. I'm calling these uh, game preparations, smaller minus function. You know how this works by now, right? So wavy brackets open and down here, wavy brackets close, the red crosses disappear. <clears throat> and some annotation, yeah, uh, we prepare the game. Okay, now we have to turn to the most sophisticated part of the game, namely the part where the player can input their colors. Uh, these colors are plotted here at the bottom of the graph and R evaluates whether these colors uh, have some matching positions or matching colors, okay? So we'll, um, well, essentially we have three tasks, okay? We have to take the colors that the player specified and we have to plot them, yeah? That's easy. Second, we have to evaluate whether any positions are correct. And third, we have to evaluate whether any colors are correct above and beyond those that are already in the correct positions. Okay, so let's try and do that. <clears throat> um, first of all, you will remember that we have uh, written a function uh, color choice. Yeah, so this would be the function where the player says black, red, orange, blue, whatsoever, and all of that is uh, saved in a function called four color set. And sorry, in a in a vector called four color set. Right. We then want to plot those um, uh, those colors, and for that we again use the points function. Okay. So the first time the player selects colors, we want to plot them at uh, the y value of 1 and at the x values of 1, 2, 3, 4, okay? So again, uh, we're using a, the points function and the x values are 1, 2, 3, 4. And this time the um, y values are all 1. Um, so we could write rep 1, 4, but of course, uh, the plotting point changes from one round to the next. So rather, this is a place where we use this counter variable, okay? So the y values are actually rep counter. So right now it's set to one, but we increase it every time the player makes a guess. And uh, okay, we want four times the same value. <clears throat> For uh, PCH, the shape of the circle, we take 19, as before. Uh, the size is 3. <clears throat> and the colors, well, here we can actually just draw on the uh, colors that the player specified. We can say for color set. See, here's another thing where our studio tries to be helpful and this time it actually is helpful um, when our studio proposes four color set and you want it you can actually just click on it and uh, it's there so that's great yeah um, actually let's try this out um, let's see I hope I ran this if not let me run this and now if I run this line here points one to four rep counter four and all the rest with a uh, four color set. <laughs> okay, the counter is somewhere up here. Let me check why that might be. Okay, some leftover. Um, it shouldn't be there, but uh, if I run this line here, counter is one, and then I run these points. Well, 
down here is where they are, where they should be. Okay, excellent. <clears throat> um, now up here I had these uh, circles that are surrounding the colors. Let me do that. So I'm copying this line here with points, but PCH is 1, the size is 3.4, and there's no color argument, so it defaults to black. If I run this, okay, that's what I wanted. Okay, and um, well, we have loaded the beeper library, so we might as well use it. Um, let's give the player a reassuring beep, and uh, my preference would be beep number 10 for this. Yeah, that's not triumphant, it's just. No, a little reassuring. Okay, now for the interesting stuff. Uh, evaluating the speaker's choices, okay? Uh, in order to do that, let's run color choice just once. Oops. So I'm typing in color choice, open close brackets into the console, and I choose black. <clears throat> red, yellow, and green. You can pick other colors, you know. So right now, four color set is black, red, yellow, green. And um, let's see the, the, the computer. What the computer selected is in secret code. <clears throat> green, blue, purple, orange. Yeah, so if you're looking at this as a human being, you will see that none of the positions are correct, but one color is correct. So ideally, we would want R to evaluate this and give a zero here in the pause field and a one in the call field. So we'll evaluate the positions first. Okay, let's start with that. <clears throat> here we go. Um, so, in order to have a data structure for the number that we're going to eventually plot here, we're going to create a vector uh, that we're going to call correct positions. Now, initially, correct positions is going to be set to zero. Yeah, and we're going to write a so-called loop to evaluate each individual position here. Yeah. You know what? Let me plot the right colors so that we can actually talk about this. Uh, so if I'm doing this. Yeah, okay. We actually have what I selected, black, red, yellow, green. That looks like a German flag that was not, not intentional. Um, yeah, and green. So, um, Right, this is going to be a little complicated, so bear with me. Uh, what we need to do is uh, write a loop uh, that starts with four, and we're going to do something for each of the four uh, colors. So in a for loop, you specify in the open close brackets a variable, yeah, um, <clears throat> and you specify how many of them you have. So four this variable in one, two, three, four different uh, iterations of the loop, please do something, okay? So this please do something that is again something that we put in wavy brackets. So for each color, please tell me if uh, the color of the computer code actually corresponds to it. So the way we're going to do that is uh, with an assessment of a statement and its truth. So R lets you do that with a so-called if statement. So if uh, the first element of four color set is the same as the first element of the secret code, <clears throat> then uh, correct positions should be uh, increased by one, okay? Don't worry, I'll explain everything in just a second, a little bit 
more elaborately, um, if that is a word. Can code and talk at the same time. I mean, come on. Um, positions plus one. Okay, so now that I have have it written down, uh, I can actually talk about this. So what happens here is, uh, so four color set, and then what you have in the angular brackets after it, that singles out one element of four color set. So um, let me just copy and paste this. Four color set one would be black. I'm running this, okay. Uh, four color set two would be red, and so on and so forth. Okay, and then uh, with secret code, secret code one would be uh, green, secret code two would be blue, and so on and so forth. So essentially what this does here is it checks is the first element of what the player selected the same thing as the first element that the computer selected, and if that is true, then correct position gets a point, so to speak. Okay, okay. now we can try out if this actually works. It's always um, a little interesting. Yeah. So I'm going to set correct positions to 1. I'm going to hit run here, and uh, we said earlier that no, there are no correct positions, so correct positions should still be zero. Let's see. Yeah, it's zero. Now, let me uh, cheat a little bit. Yeah? Let me set uh, four color set one to uh, whatever the computer has picked, green. Okay, now I'm going to rerun the loop here. Uh, correct position zero and the loop and now correct positions if everything has gone according to plan should be one okay ah uh, yeah okay <clears throat> now we still need to plot that number okay again we do that with uh, the text function <clears throat> Uh, the x-coordinate is 5 and the y-coordinate is counter. Yeah? So say 5 counter, oops, that is wrong, that should be a comma, not a, where am I? 5 comma counter <clears throat> and um, the label should be correct positions, okay? So, <clears throat> if I run this, there should be a one popping up here. Let's see. Okay, wonderful. So that wasn't that hard, right? So, um, <clears throat> let's maybe label, annotate this a little bit. Uh, check correct positions print, uh, print them, whatever, yeah. Okay, and now we need to do something very similar actually for the evaluation of the correct colors. <clears throat> so that's also going to be a loop structure, yeah, but instead of checking the correct positions, we're checking the correct colors. So we need a data structure for that. Again, smaller zero, uh, smaller minus zero, and then four i in one colon four. So the loop does something four times, wavy brackets. <clears throat> and now um, we're using another if statement. Uh, but it's going to be slightly different, okay? Uh, so again, for color, uh, for color set. <clears throat> so for every element in our colors, the um, the statement checks whether it is contained in the computer code, okay? In the secret code. 
So it would take black and it would check is black one of the elements of secret code. You know, and secret code, just to remind you, it's green, blue, purple, and orange. So no, it's not in there. Um, so instead of uh, the equal sign that we used here, yeah, we're going to use a different technical expression, namely percent in percent. This is a technical operator that checks whether the first element of four color set is contained in secret code. <clears throat> and if that is the case, then uh, correct colors is augmented by one. Okay, excellent. <clears throat> and uh, that is actually almost everything that we need to do, except there is one thing that we need to take care of. Namely, if we already have a correct position, uh, that correct position will check out also as a correct color. Okay, so we only want to count those correct color colors that are above and beyond any uh, correct position. So we actually need to subtract correct positions from correct colors. Uh, and that we do in this line here. So correct colors is um, correct colors minus correct positions. <clears throat> uh, okay. Yeah, just to remind us, um, for color set at this point is green, red, yellow, green. <clears throat> ah, that's unfortunate. Let me um, change the first one back to um, whatever it was, black, I think. Need to put that in double quotes. Oh. Okay, well, th th that will work. And secret code is uh, green, blue, purple, orange. Okay, that's actually nice because there's one correct position now, but no correct colors. So if I run all of this, correct colors, um, oh, that might actually be minus one at this point. No, it's zero. Okay, good. Ah, that would have been a problem. Now let's uh, plot the number of correct colors right here. Um, for the correct positions, we use this line, so I suggest that you can just copy and paste it uh, to down here. Uh, instead of the x-coordinate 5, we're going to use the x-coordinate 6. And as labels, we don't want correct positions. We want correct colors. Okay, so if I run this line here, there should be a 0 popping up uh, here on the plot. Okay, not bad, not bad. We're getting closer, yeah. <clears throat> But we still need to check two things, namely whether or not the player has won and whether or not the player has lost. Okay, so let me just uh, do some labeling here. So here we check correct colors and print them. And uh, now we're going to check if the player has won. When is it that the player has won? Well, um, if the player has four correct positions, yeah, that's when um, <clears throat> we do a few things to end the program to signal that the player has won. So for one thing, we want to reveal the secret. Yeah? We want to plot the secret code up here. That's what you saw uh, when I when I solved the, the, the puzzle uh, in the sped up video. Okay, so how do we do that? We use uh, points, okay, 
and I can actually use a command from up here. So where we plot the background game, uh, where, where we plot the background for the game, I'm going to copy and paste lines 19 and 20, and I'm going to paste them here. Yeah, but instead of uh, gray. We're just saying we want to plot the secret code because that is a vector of colors. Yeah. So let me just do this for the fun of it. Yeah, that's what the computer has chosen. And I don't even need to run the second one because there's already circles around them. But that's what this does. Okay, the second line of points. <clears throat> okay, we've revealed the secret. Um, yeah, let me get rid of this. Um, we um, can use our beeper once more and this time I suggest we go full-on Super Mario excellent and uh, we give the player a message um, so we want to say you win or something like that uh, and we want to print that here. So the <clears throat> x-coordinate would be 5.5 and the y-coordinate would be 12 and the label of that is uh, you win uh, exclamation mark. <clears throat> Let me do that. There we go. That's what it looks like. Right. <clears throat> so all of this goes into this if statement, yeah, and that completes our check whether or not the player has won. Now life, of course, is basically suffering. Many times you don't win, but you lose, and uh, we have to create opportunities for that, so we'll have to check if the player has lost. <clears throat> so again, that's an if statement. Um, <clears throat> and hidden in this is actually the, um, well, it's, it's not technically a loop. It is just a, a place where uh, there's an iteration from one guess to the next. So if we've been wondering, okay, how do we get from guessing one series of colors to the next one, this is where it happens, okay? So if the correct positions are smaller or equal to three, okay? So as long as the player has not won, uh, we do some things that we put in wavy brackets. <clears throat> Namely, um, we, uh, first thing that we do is we increase the counter by one, okay? So the way to do this is that we say counter, smaller, smaller, minus, counter, plus one. So whenever um, the correct positions are evaluated as smaller than four, that is three or less, uh, the, the, the counter is increased. And um, if, so another if statement, if the counter is actually equal to 12 or larger than 12, so larger than equal 12, <clears throat> then uh, the player has lost. So we uh, put out a text again at this point here. So x is 5.5 y is 12 and the label is um yeah it's these labels i don't know why i had label here <clears throat> labels you lose exclamation mark <clears throat> if i run this it'll plot over this one here yeah so we know that it works and uh, we can also put a uh, another sound 
not a winning sound. There's no good losing sound in beeper. Uh, but here's beep number three that can sort of signify an end of the game. Good enough, I'd say. Okay, so if the counter is larger than 12, then uh, the, the, the player gets this losing message. But, well, for most of the game, the counter, of course, is smaller than 12. And uh, we um, <clears throat> uh, cover that with a so-called else statement. So if the counter is 12, do this. If it's lower, then uh, do something other than that. And that's what we're going to put between wavy brackets here. And all that we're going to do here is really to restart the process of letting the player guess colors and then evaluating them. So this essentially is a function that calls on itself at the end, creating a loop. Okay, so um, let's go up to the point where we had the speaker, uh, the speaker, linguists, you know, they think of speakers all the time. Uh, the player, of course. Um, so here is where we create our uh, function, so to speak. So uh, the function we should just call plot colors, okay? Smaller minus function, open close brackets, wavy brackets, and then everything after that is part of this plot colors function. So this is really the heart and soul of the of the game. Uh, first, <clears throat> let me annotate this. Uh, plotting the player's choices. Check correct positions, print them. Check correct colors, print them. Check if the player has won. Check if the player has lost. And down here in the else statement, we just um, say plot colors open close brackets. Okay. <clears throat> now, uh, what has happened here is <laughs> there are these uh, wavy brackets down there that no one really knows what they belong to. So this may be a good moment to uh, look at this a little more closely. <clears throat> So this wavy bracket belongs to uh, the check if the player has lost, so that's good. And this wavy bracket belongs to plot colors, and that's something you can actually see down here. Yes, yeah? so our studio is trying to be helpful, and it actually is. Now, if everything has gone according to plan, which might be the case, which might be not, we should be able to uh, run this function plot colors, um, call it, and sort of play the game um, before it breaks down anyway. So let me just try this. I'm feeling adventurous. Plot colors. So this calls the uh, choose uh, color function, color choice function. So um, I'm going to stay with black as my first choice and then I'm going to say purple and then I'm going to say uh, well, not blue. <clears throat> blue perhaps oops and pink okay <laughs> um, okay it's plotting things there maybe because we reset the counter to one so let me just keep going um, it looks like I've got no correct positions, but two correct colors. <clears throat> um, okay, so let me just reshuffle the colors. Purple, pink, black, blue. Okay, so it works all right. It's just that we're working with... Uh, sort of a messed up memory where we have things, R has already things in memory that um, <clears throat> get in the way of a proper functioning. Okay, mm, right. Let me break out of the game here. <clears throat> There's really just one 
last thing that we need to do, uh, which is namely to bundle up all these functions in one big final structure that represents the game. So that's another function that we'll make. <clears throat> but the good news is that this is going to be super easy. So uh, I'm going to write mastermind, that is our function, smaller minus function, <clears throat> open close brackets, and then in wavy brackets, we're just going to put um, game preparations, open close brackets, game plot, open close brackets, and plot colors, open close brackets. <clears throat> Let me make this nice for a change. <clears throat> okay. Overall game function. Um, okay, now to see if everything really works according to plan, I'm going to uh, first of all clear this plot here yeah, with the little um, thing that you see there and I'm going to uh, clear the environment. So everything that I've told our studio up to this point I'm going to erase from the workspace. It asks me if I'm being serious yeah, and I am and now we can run everything that we have in our script once more, okay? I'm starting here at the very top. I'm running and running and running and running and running. And now, well, this is really the exciting moment. I'm going to type in mastermind, open close brackets, and we'll see what happens. Well, this doesn't look bad. Let me make this large. <clears throat> What color for position A? Black. Oops. Red, <clears throat> green, and blue. Okay. Ah. Okay, I guessed two colors correctly, but none of the positions are correct. <clears throat> Let's see, I'm going with uh, red and blue. Uh, and the other two I'm going to vary, so yellow and purple. <laughs> okay, that wasn't all too good. Um, you know what? Uh, I'll leave it at that, yeah? Um, if you've um, manage to get through this point so that you have a working version of the game that you created from scratch. Congratulations, that's magnificent. Um, there is a working version of the code that you can download from the description of this video if you just want to play the game. Yeah, And um, there are actually one or two bugs, well not bugs really, but there are problems uh, or there are extensions that you could still work on if you wanted to get more serious about this game. So for instance, right now um, the game is set up in such a way that both the computer and the player should select only colors once. Okay, So if you select red several times that will create problems. Yeah? And also the computer only selects individual unique colors. Uh, there are no doublets of colors. So these are things that you could change and that would unfortunately um, upset some of the functions that we've written. Yeah. So I would leave you to figure out those problems if uh, that's something that you want to do. But if not, uh, you now know a whole lot more about R than you did just an hour ago, which of course is a cool thing. All right, that's it for this time. See you soon.